With all of that being said, I want to make really clear that I'm not suggesting that means you just need to suck it up and not have any expectations, not talk to your partner about dynamics in your relationship that might not be working very well, uh, that you're not allowed to talk about growth with them. That's certainly not what I'm saying. I think we just need to be mindful of how we approach those conversations. And a few tips that I'd offer you are don't be too attached to, pardon the pun, the labels of it or the way that the work needs to look. So even though attachment theory might really resonate with you and you might love doing online courses and you might want to follow all the Instagram accounts and stuff. That's not everyone's cup of tea and that's okay. That doesn't mean that they don't care about growing together. It just might look different to you. And and I think we need to have some open-mindedness and flexibility because if we're looking for them to be behaving exactly as we would, again, that's just, it's a little bit self-centered And it's a little bit controlling in that we're trying to define what their journey should look like by reference to what we think our journey should look like. So allowing someone to walk their own path while still hopefully being able to have conversations around things that might not be working or things that could use improvement. Another thing that I think is really important and helpful is to frame it as an us thing rather than a them thing. So it's not like you're avoidant and you need to go read all of the books and stop being so avoidant because your avoidance is the problem here. Again, that's an attack and it's going to elicit defensiveness that is just very reliable. And I'm sure that if you were getting that kind of energy from them, you'd get defensive as well. So I think that rather than me versus you, anxious versus avoidant or whatever, it's like, oh, There are some things between us where we get stuck. I've noticed that we get into these patterns. Would you be open to us talking about ways we might be able to navigate that better so that we can avoid having these big ineffective fights? Because I can assure you that your avoidant partner doesn't like those cycles either. They don't like those big emotional upsets and ruptures and then the ineffective repair conversations that drag on for two hours. That's, I promise you, that's not what they want either. So I think the more that you can frame it as us against the problem rather than me against you, that's going to be a much more palatable entry point into a conversation for anyone, but certainly for an avoidant partner. I think another thing you can do is lead with your own acknowledgement of your stuff, right? Because again, I think there is a tendency for anxious people to go like, you have this thing. (laughs) There's a name for what you are. And here are all of the problems with that. Here are all the behavioral manifestations of it. And here's what you need to do about it. I think if you can go, I'm totally guilty of this. This is who I am. I notice a lot of myself in these patterns and that drives all of these behaviors in me. And I totally recognize that must be challenging for you. And I'm really sorry for that. I'm going to work on it. Take responsibility for your side of the street and kind of lead by example there, because I think the more you can do that, again, it reinforces that it's not you on your high horse, diagnosing them with some sort of defect and telling them that they need to change or else no one's going to respond well to that. So I think that the more that you can implement those things and go into any conversation with kind of clean intentions and clean energy, I think that'll serve you in really good stead. So just to sum up, it's not about never approaching conversations with an avoidant partner about change or growth. I would never suggest that. My partner leans avoidant and we do a lot of growth work on an ongoing basis. So it's not to say that you just can't touch that. It's just being really mindful of the way that you approach it for your own sake, for their sake, for the sake of your relationship, because just telling them that they're avoidant and then expecting them to walk the same path and trajectory as you might in your own process of becoming more secure and shifting patterns can veer very quickly into that over-functioning, responsibility-taking, controlling territory, uh, and that tends not to end well. 